<laughs> G'day folks, I'm Mick from Sale from Iron Man 4x4. Let's discuss the controversial subject of bull bars, underbody plates, side steps, battery equipment, canopies, roof racks, sliding systems, water storage, additional fuel, everything that can be done. Dun, dun, da, dun, dun. G'day folks, I'm Mick Van Sale and welcome to another Ironman 4x4 Tech Talk video. Today we're going to be answering some more viewers questions. Love the questions. What is the correct or, or legal way to use or mount or wire my spotlights on my four wheel drive? Very good question. Um, legal way, well I'm not sure that anybody knows here in South Africa what is legal and what is not legal when it comes to spotlights. But here at Ironman 4x4 we like to do things that are safe. Um, so let's look at it from that point of view. There are two things I'm going to cover here is the installation itself and what you need to look for and then the use of your spotlights is a very important point that we need to make there. So first and foremost with the installation of the spotlights one of the most important things is what wire is used and what fusing you use uh, when you do the install. The wire thickness will be determined by how many amps the lights are going to draw that you mount to your vehicle. The amps are determined by taking the wattage of the light and dividing it by the voltage of the battery system. We're going to use 12 volts it's not quite 12 volts but we'll we'll use 12 volts this here spotlight is a hundred watt spotlight at 12 volts and they typically mounted two on the vehicle so there's 200 watts of power uh, going through a 12 volt system so the amp draw for both of these lights will be around 16 amps of draw a very thin wire is not going to do the job because a wire like this can only handle about five amps per meter this is a one millimeter wire you would need to go up to something like 2.5 millimeter wire at a minimum to accommodate lights like these. This light bar down here might be up to 300 watts at 12 volts that's 25 amps and you'll have to go to an even thicker wire still. So make sure that you use a thick enough wire, wire that is 50% more than what you're going to be asking of it from the lights. That's the safety margin we work with when we do any of our wiring, at least 50% over kill, overkill as such. The fusing that you put in that line uh, of the power feed to the light, remember that the fuse must always be rated lower than what the wire is rated, otherwise the wire will burn before the fuse goes. And the fuse has to have a higher rating than what the amp draw of the lights are. So 18 amps, you're probably going to put a 20 or a 22 or a 25 amp fuse, which means you're going to need a 30 amp uh, wire to run these lights safely. Then if something goes wrong, Fuse will pop, no foul, no harm done, okay. So I think that's about all I'm going to say on wiring. We are going to be doing an in-depth video on everything automotive, electrics, wiring, lighting, refrigeration, charging, all of that. We're going to be doing a, a stunning video series on that for you guys. So if you like that type of thing, if you want more information, subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification button so that you are notified when uh, those videos are aired. The next thing that we need to look at with spotlights is how do we switch them on and off and how do we use them. So typically what we do at Ironman 4x4 is we switch our lights on and off with two switches. The first switch is a dash switch. This is the master switch as we call it. And when you switch this switch on, the spotlight will come on depending on whether you put the vehicle's brights on and off. And when you put this master switch off, doesn't matter what you do with the lights, the bright lights of your vehicle, the, the vehicle's original bright lights, these spotlights will not come on. Remember when you're traveling in and around town and in and around the city, there's never any reason to use these lights unless you're being an ass flashing at people. Uh, you can do that with a normal brights on your car. But these lights are pretty bright and you can actually blind oncoming traffic, putting their lives and your own life in danger. So in and around town, switch them off. These lights were designed to give you additional lighting when you're traveling in rural areas um, where there's wild animals or unattended uh, domestic animals. That's where these lights are really needed or if you're traveling off-road, if you're driving around in the bush. That's when you use these lights and then you switch them on with this switch. I mentioned earlier that the other switch is the car's actual uh, bright on and off switch. So that has to be wired in such a way that both of those switches switch this light on and off. Now this little switch here will probably handle around five amps worth of current draw. So it cannot find itself in the actual power 
supply to this light. So we then end up using two circuits as such and to switch the lights on and off, we use a heavy duty switch called a relay. It is wired in, this is a relay that can handle Without glasses, I can see it's 40 amp. I lie, I read it just now. Uh, this relay can handle 40 amps worth of power, which is more than enough for this bar light or two of these spotlights over here. And this will actually switch on and off that 16 or 25 amps worth of power running through your very thick wire. And to switch the relay, we have another circuit running through the other two connection points on the relay mounting. And that is a very low current, very low draw, uh, circuit that goes from the feed wire of your bright lights, that's what we call the trigger, it then goes to your main switch on the dashboard, it then goes to the relay to switch the relay in and out, and then it goes back to a negative point. So two circuits over each other, the one is used to switch the high current, low current circuit used to switch the high current circuit by means of a relay. But at the end of the day, you have the ability to switch the lights off when you're in and around town. And if you have them on and you're driving down a rural road, if a car comes over the hill, you can instantaneously switch all the bright lights off, spotlights included, by just flicking the bright light lever in your car. That's very important, folks. You don't want to have to be reaching down to another switch and missing it, and in the meantime, blinding somebody that's coming along to you. That's just silly and a no-no. So I hope that answers your question. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.